Hello. It's for you. History is calling. Welcome to the Telephone Museum. The Winter Park Telephone Company was started by Carl Hill Galloway in 1910 in Maitland, Florida. Carl installed a used switchboard in the back of his parents' grocery and feed store located on the southwest corner of Horatio and Maitland Avenue. He installed used magneto phones at the store's 10 best customers in the hope that this would increase the store's business by making it easier to place orders. When the company outgrew the back room in the store, they moved the operation to Carl's home where his wife Lena operated the switchboard, often with one of her three boys on her lap. In 1912, a second switchboard was installed in the Hinkle Building at the corner of New England and Park Avenues in Winter Park. The first Winter Park telephone directory was printed in 1913, listing over 40 subscribers. A two-story brick building was constructed in 1921 at 128 New England Avenue in Winter Park. Several years later, a second building was constructed next door in 1949. By 1956, Winter Park Telephone installed the 10,000th telephone. After the death of Carl Hill Galloway in 1958, his three sons continued to run the family business. Winter Park Telephone became the first company in the Southeast to offer Teltone push-button calling service in 1966. United Telephone of Florida acquired Winter Park Telephone Company in 1979, and the Telephone Museum was founded in 1981. This is a magnetophone. If you wanted to place a call, you'd lift up the receiver, and then the two batteries that are inside the phone, once you crank this, they'll send an electronic signal through the wires to the operator, and it'll cause one of these flaps to fall, signaling to the operator that you're ready to place a call. So let's give it a try. Keep your eye here and see if the operator signaled. Hello? This is the common battery switchboard. The magneto system had the batteries located in the phone. This system has all the batteries located right inside of the switchboard. This enabled you to have a much smaller phone in your home, like this candlestick phone. When you were ready to place a call, you'd simply lift up the receiver, which will send a light and beeping noise to the operator, letting them know you're ready to be connected. The switching room is the main hub of the telephone company where calls came in and went out. A telephone switch is a device or system that connects one telephone line to another so that two people in different locations can talk to one another. These switches are the Like 40 and the Like 25, named after the number of switches that they had. The Like 25 on the left was originally used here in Maitland for many years at the El Rancho Motel. This is a step-by-step -step switch. The central office switching equipment has a two-motion stepping switch. A contact arm is moved up to select one of 10 rows of contacts and then rotated clockwise to select one of 10 contacts in that row a total of 100 choices. In the mid-1950s, the 500 series wall phone debuted. These were really popular in her home, especially in the kitchen. The great thing is, designers created them in a whole rainbow of colors. Do you remember how to dial one of these? You, if you knew what number you wanted, you put your finger in the dial and then turned it to the finger stop. That would send a signal that would indicate the number that you were trying to reach.
desk phones like these were very popular because they gave you multiple lines. The last one was reserved for an intercom system. The Autocron STM, or small town machine, was able to tell you the exact time and temperature without digital technology. This machine would be located in your local bank or business. You would call in the, the central number, it'd give you a little advertisement about that business, and then it would say, at the tone, the time will be 4.58 and 74 degrees. Here are examples of tools of the trade, everything you need to repair phones and install them. Glass insulators like these were first produced in the 1850s for use with telegraph lines. As technology developed, insulators were needed for telephone lines and electric power lines. They seemed to glisten on every horizon, the top telephone poles stretching into every new place that people settled. Telephone technology and the look of telephones has really changed over the years. Here we have a selection of wall phones from some of the very earliest magneto phones to touch tone technology. We also have desktop phones, including the very popular princess line phone and the 1980s version light up phone that was clear acrylic that lit up once you actually lifted the receiver. Thank you for joining me today on this tour of the Telephone Museum part of Art and History Museums Maitland. We're so glad you could join us. We just want to thank the City of Maitland, Orange County, United Arts of Central Florida, the State of Florida, and especially the Galloway Family Foundation for their generous support. And we also want to say thank you to one of our great volunteers without whom we couldn't make this all work and give you these great experiences here at the Telephone Museum, and that's Rod Chapman. He's been volunteering with us for a long time, and we really appreciate his help. So thank you for joining us. I hope you'll come out and see us real soon.